when I go Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? Oh, it's amazing Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I go Mindful of me That you hear me When I go Is it true that you are thinking of me How you love me
is awesome to have you here this morning. Could you please give just a shout of praise to God this morning? Yeah! It's awesome to have you this morning. Let's pray real quick. Father, this is all for you, Father. You take all the honor, all the glory. This is all for you, Father. Without you, we are nothing. We cannot do anything without you. And we take this time to honor you, to worship you, to tell you that we love you, that you are a king of kings and the Lord of lords. And we come united as one church to honor and glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen. Jesus 
of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, faithful promises, yeah. Time and time again, you have proven you just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast and let my
Father, because you are faithful, you are faithful to the end. There's nobody like you. Father, without you, these are just songs, these are just instruments, this is just noise without you. We need your presence, we need your love, we need your Holy Spirit. This is what moves us, your presence, not the music not the instruments and the chords and the sound, but you and your presence. You turn what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for good. You turn grace into gardens. You turn death into life. We honor you this morning. Amen.
igual de ti Sin miedo, sin reservas Cada fracaso has visto Señor Y aun tu amigo soy Porque el Dios de los bondes es el Dios de los valles No hay lugar que me pueda alejar De tu gracia y amor practice as you have no idea. So they give you all support with God. Dalito de Lidros. Oh, no hay nada.
Jesus said, let the children come unto me and hinder them not, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. And he laid hands on them and blessed them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you can't say praise the Lord this morning, I don't know when you can say it. Amen. Graves into gardens. Tumbas a jardines, ¿verdad? Voy a predicar en español. Me siento el espíritu. Praise the Lord. You know, I was listening to this song early this morning. Graves into gardens. And the Lord led me to the passage in John chapter 20, where Mary Magdalene came to the empty grave for the second time. And she looked inside the grave and she saw two angels. And the angel said, why are you crying? Woman, why are you crying? And she says, because they took the body, something I'm paraphrasing of my Lord, and I don't know where he's at. And she turns around and she sees Jesus. But she thought it was the gardener. And she said, what she thought was the gardener, she says, just tell me where you've taken him. And Jesus said something to the effect, the same thing, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And he just said one word after that, and that was her name. And he said, Mary. And she recognized him. And she grabbed hold of him. This morning I want to tell you that Jesus is the gardener of our souls. Amen. And he wants to speak directly with you this morning and he wants to do a transforming work in your life i don't know how you came in here this morning but like the song says he turns mourning into dancing he turns ashes into beauty and he turns what was the last one help me he turns ruins or uh, whatever it's somewhere out there but he turns it into glory. Shame, shame, shame. He turns shame into glory. I was just testing to see if you're listening. Good job. Oh, there's nothing better, nothing better than you, Lord. No hay nada, nada mejor que mi Dios. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you come today to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you that you still are a miracle working God, that you are turning gardens, graves into gardens. And Lord, I just pray that you would just breathe your Holy Spirit into this place. Transform lives. And God, I know there's people here today hurting that have walked in with heartaches and helplessness and problems. And God, I just pray that you would just touch lives today. God, we pray that you would use your messengers to proclaim God's word in the power of the Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, amen. Welcome to Panama International Church. And if you're watching on live stream, we want to welcome everyone. And we want to welcome you if you're visiting for the first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're visiting for the first time, we want to invite you to go to our website. And as soon as you go on our website, there's a pop-up and it's a connect card. If you'll hit that, it only takes about a minute to fill it out. And we will get a hold of you during this week. All righty. We have sign-ups for next week's service. And what we do is we ask you to sign up sooner than later. We are filling up every week. This place is going and growing, and God's working here. So sign up early, and then if something happens and you're not able to make it, if you could please do us a favor. If you could please call the church and let us know that you, you signed up but aren't able to make it so that we can give that space to someone else and, and make sure that everybody that wants to come, comes. We understand at times people can't make it. So, well, praise the Lord. And then the last thing is we have an inflection video for you, and we hope that you enjoy this inflection video. Check it out.
hearing for Jesus this morning. Praise the Lord. So great to be in the house of the Lord. How many of you excited to be here this morning? Come on, just give a shout out to Jesus. So good to see you. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for those of you that are at home watching live stream. We want to welcome you as well. I echo the sentiments of Paul this morning. It's such a joy to have you here with us today. God is working. God is moving. Amen. Not just in here, but among our kids as well. Amen. Didn't you appreciate that, them coming out and worshiping with us together? You know, so many people think that, you know, that it's just como un guarderia. You know, we're just babysitting over there. Can I tell you, we're not here to babysit your kids. We're here to minister to your kids. And they are not the church of tomorrow. Listen to me. They are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church of today. And God is working in their lives. And I want to encourage your parents, raise your kids in the way that they should go. The Bible says that when they're old, they will not depart from the truth. Invest in your children. It is absolutely the most important investment that you can ever make in your life as a parent. Amen. Well, it's good to have you here this morning. Let me just um, encourage you in the area of giving today. I, you know, as I was reflecting this past week, you know, Amy and I, we've been, you know, going down memory lane uh, quite often, uh, every day, thinking about something that has happened in this previous 10 years of our tenure here at Panama International Church. And one of the things that I remember um, how many of you have, were ever a part of our Christmas parties when we did the white elephant uh, game? Anybody? Okay. Well, I don't know if you've ever played the white elephant uh, game before, but um, if you haven't, let me just kind of explain to you what it's all about. Um, when we have our Christmas parties, or I should say when we had our Christmas parties, we would always play this game where, where people would buy a second-rate gift. You know what a second-rate gift is, right? A gift that doesn't have any value. It's, it's real cheap. Sometimes it's funny, uh, probably not to the person who receives it, but it's funny for everybody else. And I remember one Christmas party we had, uh, and these two young ladies have, have since moved on so I can share the story. But um, one young lady bought a white elephant gift, and this gift didn't have absolutely any value whatsoever. I mean, it was worthless. And when the other young lady picked the gift and she opened it, she just looked dumbfounded. Like, what is this? Like, who would even think about buying a gift? Or, what is this? Like, and so she, and I felt so bad because she did not get the memo about white elephant gifts. And she had purchased a really nice gift for somebody. And so in her mind, she was thinking, why did I get this gift? I felt really, really bad for her. As I began to think about that story, the Lord reminded me of how we sometimes give to the Lord. Like, sometimes we give the white elephant way to the Lord. We give God a second-rate gift. We give God something that's worthless. We give God something that doesn't hold any value, something that isn't true treasure in our life. But we're quick to give the world all of our treasure, and yet we're slow to give God our very best. And as you give to the Lord today, there's two ways that you can give. And I want to encourage you out of this verse of scripture found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Because God reminds us that he gave the most extravagant gift that he could ever give. Jesus Christ. He is our first fruit. And so as we give today, I want to remind you of this in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. We have an amazing promise from God that when we bring him our very first of our increase that he gives to us, he promises us to return the blessing in even greater measure. 
So there's two ways that you can give here at Panama International Church. You can give by pulling out an envelope uh, in the back of your seat and giving as you leave today in the paint church bucket on your way out. Or there is uh, the bank account of the church where you can do a wire transfer and directly transfer your tithe or your offerings to the Lord. But I want to encourage you this morning, be faithful in giving your first fruits to Jesus. And you will see the blessings of God come upon you in ways that you never imagined in your life. Amen? So let's be faithful in our giving this morning. Well, today we have two very special guests with us today. Dr. J and Nancy Dickerson. I say Dr. J Dickerson because he holds a doctorate in missiology. It is a joy and an honor to be able to have them with us. Let me just share a little bit about Dr. Jay Dickerson and Nancy Dickerson this morning. They are area directors over the Central American region for some 100 or more units of missionaries from the Assemblies of God World Missions. Remember, I told you and I've been explaining to you as we're going through this transition that this church, Panama International Church, was founded by the Assemblies of God World Missions in the United States. And so we have two coverings here. We have the covering of the United States Assemblies of God, and we have the covering of here, the Assemblies of God here in Panama. And so Jay and Nancy are our boss. They oversee us in the ministry and even Panama International Church to some degree. They have a heart for missionaries. They have a heart for the work of God. I want you to know something this morning. They have a heart for you. They want to see this church, this ministry, along with every other ministry in Central America, blossom and flourish and advance for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ. And so they're here today because they usually come every year. They weren't able to come last year because of the pandemic, but they're here today and And they're just going to come and share their hearts. They did an incredible job last night with inflection. I mean, we had an incredible move of God. And I believe God wants to speak to us today. And I'm sure they'll share a little bit more personally. But can we give a warm welcome to Jay and Nancy as they come to share God's word this morning? It is truly... An honor to be here this morning. Maybe you can't start crying now. We got the mic up to you. It's it's the Holy Spirit. No, honestly, feeling the presence of the Lord here in this place. If you don't feel it, mm, because the as we were worshiping and just ushering in the presence of the Lord, it's here. He is here. It. He is here. He's with us. And it's just incredible. It's an incredible opportunity to be here to see each of you. But more than that, to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, his presence at work here in Paint Church. We are excited to be here with you this morning, and we're grateful for this opportunity. It is wonderful being here. The presence of the Lord, as Nancy was sharing. In our heart, we pray for you regularly. Um, We have seven countries in Central America that are under our leadership. And Saturday, we always are praying for Panama. And so you're in our prayers as well. We've had the privilege of being here with Paint Church since the, since the beginning, um, many years ago. And to see what the Lord has done and is doing is just phenomenal. Yesterday on our Facebook feed, it came through two years ago. We were here, uh, when, one of the launch for, this, for the service here at this building. And um, just the memories, but also what God has been doing and what He's going to do. We're trusting Him, amen? He's a good God. The God I serve is a big God, and he's able. Amen. So today we want to share a little bit about us, you know. Somebody knows this. I don't get a moment. I might get a chance to speak. We do tag team preaching. We've been married 42 years, um, and I know we look really young for that. It's been a fun journey, and I, I think back to those 42 years ago, you didn't know what you were saying yes to, but um, here we are on a journey together. But this, this past year, we would have been here before, but this past year has been very different for all of us, hasn't it? It's been a, 
a strange time, learning to wear masks, learning to uh, be vaccinated, learning all these different things. But as, as Pastor was sharing, we have the privilege of, of serving as area directors for Central America with the Assemblies of God World Missions, which means we're legal representatives, but also we feel our role as pastor of missionaries and pastors. We're involved in, in pastoring missionaries, helping in assignments, places where we're serving, also in, in strategic and helping them find the, the resources they need. And so it's always exciting to see what the Lord is doing here. And I really believe with all my heart, these aren't just words, that this is a very strategic church. Amen. It's not just a happenstance church. Every time we come into Panama, we sense the, the urgency, we sense the bigness, we sense the importance. And I really believe Paint Church is, is a church of, of great importance, not only here, but, but around the world. Yeah. And so there, international churches like this have an impact not only here, but they plant vision and seeds yeah. and lives that, that will touch all around, all around the world. So you are important. And, and I love when, when Brother Paul was saying that, that when Jesus called Mary's name, she knew who he was. You know, today Jesus is calling you by name. I was sharing last night, and it was really fun last night. Um, you have to ask inflection people about cauliflower and about um, the robe. Uh, those are parts of, the, you know, you have to be there to get all the, all the stuff going on. But um, the, the, the fact that it was just last night and sensing the presence of the Lord, but also what God wants to do in each of us, but knowing he knows us by name. Uh, I tell, um, I'm the youngest of three. I have a brother and a sister. My mother couldn't even remember my name. And she would go through my sister's name, my brother's name. But Jesus never makes that mistake. He knows you by name. Amen. So we do ask, ask for prayers. We're all going through this time of difficulty. At times it seemed pretty hopeless, didn't it, babe? Yeah. We had early on uh, several superintendents. We had a superintendent in Belize, superintendent in Guatemala, who both passed away from the virus. National treasure of the Assemblies of God in Nicaragua passed away from the virus. We have friends, pastors, we have leaders who, who have gone to be with Jesus. It has been tough, and the, the lockdowns that you all face, all the things, and we know it's not over, and so sometimes it seems hopeless, but we serve a God who's a God of hope. Amen. You know, I, I think of, of the things that have passed, and we've all been through it, right? We're, we're tired of all of it and want tomorrow to wake up and it be a new day, a new chapter, and everything back to what is normal. But Whatever we don't even know is. what that is. Yeah. But the one thing that I do know is that God is a God of hope. I was reading in Romans 5, and in Romans 5, Paul goes, we're going to suffer. So if you think that life shouldn't be, you know, well, we're not going to suffer. It's going to be great. It's going to be great, but we're going to suffer. That's right. And the word says that when we go through suffering, we dig into God. We get so close to God that what happens is his character begins to build in us. Right. And this character, as it flourishes in our life, we take on that character and it gives us hope. And others around us see this hope. And I love Romans 5.5. 5, it says this, and hope does not disappoint us. That's right. God has poured out his love into our hearts by his Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us. We are not without hope. In the middle of crazy times, we're not without hope. We heard from, from a mission, one of our missionaries in El Salvador. He called us. He goes, man, you're not going to believe God is doing so many incredible things through this time. He said, I had a group of young, um, young adults that called me and said, you know, we've gotten together some, some, some clothes and we want to go to this area. We've heard they're really, really struggling through this COVID situation. And we want to go out and minister to them. We want to pray for them and, and, and just let them know about Jesus. But we just wondered if maybe you had some food that we could put with these clothes and, and hand out. So the missionary looked around, got some money from... BGMC and um, Boys and Girls Missionary Campaign, Crusade Challenge. Challenge. And they put together 100 bags of food and clothes. Remember that, 100 bags of food and clothes. So they went out, they prayed, they knocked. I mean, they, the people were so receptive. At this time, people are looking for hope, and you've got the hope. People are receptive. Right. And so they 
handed it out. At the end of the day, they're back just all excited. Man, we went to this house. We saw this person healed, and this whole family gave their life to the Lord. And I mean, they're just rejoicing. And one of the guys in the group says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know what God did? And they're like, well, sure. We're talking about it. No. How many bags of, how many bags of food and clothes did we have? hundred. We gave out over 200 bags of food and clothes. Amen. God is in the multiplication business. Times when we don't understand, he is our God of hope. That's right. He's not going to leave us hopeless. His Holy Spirit is going to be with us. It's been exciting to see in the midst of difficult times, and yes, we have had horrible difficult times that we've seen people go through, and maybe some of us have gone through that too. But we don't want this time to be marked by all the deaths and all the sicknesses, right? That's right. Let's start play, praying for COVID revival. What does 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says? If my people who are called by my name will humble, humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, we're living in wicked times, and seek my face. Then we're going to hear from God. He is going to come and heal our land. Right. I'm ready for a healing. Amen? Amen. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know what this has brought to you. But as we're sharing, God is the God of hope. Yes. And he will minister to you. And, and be expectant for yes. what he's going to do. And, and today, as we share from the word, we'd like to share a message of hope, but also a message of challenge that we can hear God's voice. How many of you believe today that God still speaks to his people? Amen. Be careful with that. Right? Right? You ask your pastor, be careful with that. God still speaks. Sometimes it's not a message we want to hear. But God challenges people. And we want to challenge you to be people listening to the voice of faith. And I don't know where your situation is today. Maybe you're not in right relationship with Jesus. He wants to speak to you. He's calling you by name. Because just like Mary, he wants to embrace you. He wants to respond to you. He's not here for the judgment. He's here to embrace and to give you a message of hope. But our, our scripture reference, the story as we, we look today is from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 3. And if you can put those verses up, we're going to read part of this chapter and, and tell the story of Joshua, a very familiar passage. But Joshua chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says this, Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass on ahead of the people, so they took it up and went ahead. I want to stop there for just a second. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of the presence of the Lord. And they were not going to move unless the presence of the Lord moved them. Now this story is the point where that Joshua is about to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. But before they do that, they have to go through the Jordan River. Now this time, the Ark of the Covenant, remember the presence of the Lord. I'm a, a to-do list person. I love to have a list of things I'm going to accomplish. And at the end of the day, check them all off. And I feel like, wow, isn't it a wonderful day? And if I don't have some stuff I can check off, I'll make it up and put it on there. I just want to feel like I've done something. But in the kingdom of God and the economy of God, my to-do list has nothing to do with anything. It's all about his plan. If we follow after the presence of the Lord, Lord, don't just bless what I'm doing. I want to do what you're telling me to. So Joshua was about to lead the people, but he said first, the Ark of the Covenant. In the next passage, verses 12 and 13, moving down, it says this, Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. Now, I want you to remind you of this story. There was something different before they entered the promised land. The children of Israel had passed through another water 40 years earlier. It was called the Red Sea when they left Egypt. And at that time, the Lord parted the waters, dried up the land, and they walked across on dry land. But this time, it wasn't going to happen that way. If you follow the scriptural story here, the water was there and they had to cross it. But before they could cross it, they had to step into the water. Now think about that. There's a potential and a possibility for failure because they could have drowned. The water was raging there, but before they were going to see the miracle, they had to step forth. Joshua was now their leader, 
But he was facing his, his destiny, his time of obeying the voice of the Lord. To understand the context, we have to go backwards some. Forty years earlier, we know that Moses had led the children of Israel out of Egypt. They had gone through the Red Sea, the water parted, dry land, and we're told thousands and thousands of people crossed over the Red Sea that day. And when they got through, the waters came back. When they got there, they were at the border of the Promised Land, and Moses sent 12 spies into the Promised Land to go and give a report of tell of the people what was there. So 12 went. Joshua and Caleb were two of those, and both of those saw the land and saw the potential. So they got these big, they come back with a report, big grapes. I mean, it's beautiful. The land is flowing with milk and honey, and we can take it. Two out of 12. But the other 10 said, oh, it is beautiful, but it's too big for us. The children of Israel chose to believe the bad report because it seemed impossible. Right now, where are we? Are we at the ten saying, oh, it looks good, but it's too big for us? Or are we the Joshua and Caleb? Well, what happened for the next 40 years? They wandered in the desert till all that generation passed away. And Moses, their leader, had just tremendous meetings with the Lord, the presence of God. The tent, he would go there, the pillar and the fire, and they would see him come. But if you follow the scriptural reference, we see that Joshua was his assistant. And Joshua went in with him. Sometimes he stayed in the tent after Moses left. I think about the times when Moses came out and his face was shining because of the radiance of being in the presence of the Lord. And I want to tell you something. When we're in the presence of the Lord, something happens to us. People should see a marked difference in our lives. They say there's something different about you. In the middle of a, of a terrible pandemic, when we've been in the presence of God, people are saying, how can you handle this? Because of the God I serve. Well, Moses came out. He was so bright they had a veil on him. I wonder what Joshua looked like. Did he come out with a veil on as well? Joshua was the heir apparent. He was Moses' assistant. And as the journey went through, and we know Moses passed away, he didn't get to go lead the children of Israel into the promised land. Now he was gone and Joshua was their leader. But I think that Joshua was their leader. He knew it in his head but it wasn't in his heart yet. He started looking at the impossibility of the situation. Even though he had been a man of faith, even though he had known the power and seen the power of God, he wondered if he was worthy, if he was able. I like in um, Joshua 1, verses 6, 7, 8, 9, or 7, 8, 9. Is that up there? Yeah. Um, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law, my servant, most, my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Next verse. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I will begin to exalt. Okay, that's good. That's good. So if you look on though in chapter, I mean in verse 8, verse 9, he says it again. Be strong and courageous. There's nothing to fear here, buddy. I'm going to be with you. Be strong and courageous. I was looking, did a little bit of research. And when there's something in the Bible three times, it's to get our attention. When God was in front, when he was talking to to Joshua, he's like, come on, listen to me. Be strong and fear not. I am with you. I'm going to go with you. I'm not asking you to go by yourself. I'm going to go with you. There are times that we get a little afraid. I get a little afraid. Maybe y'all don't. And I think, oh, God, really? You want me to do this? And he says, yeah, be strong and courageous. Go. Go. There are many times that we do not follow through what we've got as placed in our heart to do because of fear. But I'm telling you today, when God says be strong and courageous, he's going to be with us. He does not leave us alone, but he goes before us. And we can take that to the bank. God will be with us. Be strong and courageous. And Joshua needed to hear that. He needed it to get from his head to his heart to once again see, yes, my God is with me. Yes, we can do this. 
I'm telling you that today. We can do this. Be strong and courageous. You know, Joshua was there. He'd been called. He had the position, had the title, but in his heart. And so now we see that he's at the point of the miracle of his destiny being defined. If he goes into the water and it's not the Lord, he's going to drown. But if they obey the voice of God, his obedience will bring freedom. Understand that. His obedience first will be bringing freedom for him because he'll get past the point of what I can't do. And the next verse uh, I have there in Joshua chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord speaking to Joshua again, being very tender and said, today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Joshua wondered, can I do it? Do I have the ability to do the job? And the Lord's message was, no, you can't. But I will be with you and I will do the task. Can we do what the Lord is calling us to do? No, but he can do it through us. He's looking for willing vessels. So here we have Joshua at the river. One, first, if he obeys the voice of the Lord, it will bring freedom for him. Also, if he obeys the voice of the Lord, it will bring freedom for the children of Israel. Because they were still living in in bondage. They were still living in the journey. But once they passed through this miracle, once they passed through the Jordan River, then they would be leaving that behind and entering into the promised land. Our obedience brings freedom. Our obedience is not easy. I, I share this often. Obedience isn't for sissies. It isn't for the weaklings. Because stepping into the water is not an easy thing to do. But God calls His people. And I I think as we pray over you, Ava, I believe that God has a place for you like you've never seen before. The call of God. Nelson, Pastor Nelson and Amy, God, you're at at this river thing. It's like, wow, we're going to step in this? We're really going to do this? God has spoken. Your obedience will bring freedom. But what happens when we don't obey? People are left in bondage. First, obedience isn't for sissies. We started a high school in Belize. We we started ministry in Belize many years ago. And we built a high school because there were the children in in Belize at eighth grade. If you had money, you could go on to high school. If you could pass the test to get into high school, you could go. So 50% of the students, there was space for them. The other 50% got involved with drugs and gangs and a lot of teenage pregnancies, and you can just imagine. And so the Lord really laid on our heart to build this church, I mean, build the school. And we didn't know how. We, we had never built a school before. Um, so, but we said, you know what? God told us to do it, and, and we're going to do it. We're just going to make it happen. And so we went home, raised some money, and we had enough money for three buildings and a bathroom and an office. And we thought, okay, we don't have any kind of strategy to um, open the school. We, we've not advertised, but, you know, let's just open the door and see what happens. We'll, we'll just start registering students. Is that stupid or what? But we did it. And that first day when we thought, oh, no, nope, nobody even knows we're here, we had over 90 kids were enrolled in our school. But I didn't tell you this. Those buildings... They fit 15 students. We thought, okay, we're going to start with 45 students. It's going to be a good year. We can get 45 students. 90 students registered that first day. (laughs) We looked at each other and said, oh, dear Jesus, what are we going to do now? (laughs) How are we going to accomplish this? We had 200 kids that were on a waiting list for the next year. And we're like, we don't, we don't have any plans to build any more classes. But, hey, we got 200 students already that want to come to the school. We started that school that year with 99 students. We had 33 students in each of those classrooms. And I'm telling you, it was great. The Lord gave me this phenomenal opportunity to teach Bible in this, in this high school. And we just started with the ninth grade. I don't know if I said that. We just started with the ninth grade. Our plans were to, grade, to add a grade each year. So we started with the ninth grade. And um, I was able to, to, I mean, it was just incredible. These kids were getting saved. We were seeing changes on the campus. We put them in small group discipleship, um, small discipleship groups. How do you say that? That looks pretty good to me. Small small, groups of discipleship. There you go. 
we were discipling these kids and they were growing in the Lord. And it was such an incredible time for us to be in this place. I thought, wow, God, this is just incredible seeing these kids get saved. And, and it, I, I just can't, I, it was just, you had to be there. But in the middle of all of that, there are many students that could not afford the small price that we charged for the high school. So we said, you know what, we're going to start a work study program because we want all the students that can to be able to be a part of this school. So they would, they would do chores a couple days a week and they'd tick off their, their bill and, and get their bill paid down. And it was great. We had a good group of kids that would come out and work. But we have one student that I, I really remember, she was in my last class and she was in our work study program. And I'd look at her and go, Elizabeth, today's the day, because she never showed up. Elizabeth, today's the day. Yes, miss, yes, miss, I'm gonna be there. And it was like Houdini just met, waved a wand and she was gone. And I think, where in the world did she go? I, I'm, she's here now and then she's gone. And this happened several times and we'd call her in and she'd cry, oh, I'm so sorry, yes, I'm gonna be there. No, I, 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 I'm gonna be there. But we never knew what was going on until a bit later. See, her mother had a man living in the home with them that was paying the rent and putting food on the table. And he thought that it was his right to be able to abuse her every afternoon. And he demanded that she come straight home from school. She was not to go anywhere, be right home so that he could do what he wanted. Truth is, Elizabeth never wanted to leave New Hope High School. The only way that we could help Elizabeth was to give her an education so that she could get out of that family, get out of that home, not the family, but get out of the home and continue her education and get a job that would, she could support herself. We've thought about this. What would have happened if we had said, you know what, we've, we've got a lot to do. We're just not gonna worry about that high school. Our obedience brought Elizabeth freedom. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what God is, what situation God has placed in front of you and he's saying, this is what I want you to do. And you're like, I don't know about that. I, I don't feel too confident. Good, because then God can do something in you to make it happen. Your obedience will bring freedom. I don't know, maybe, maybe you're struggling with an addiction, maybe depression, maybe, maybe it's a new job. Maybe a relationship. Your obedience at what God is calling you to right now will bring freedom. Amen. I think of when, when the Lord spoke to us about even starting the high school project. We thought because God said it, it was going to just be really easy. Everything was going to come together. We went to our government leaders and they said, oh, yes, we'll give you a piece of property and you can go start building. So we started the process. We go and start building. We weren't looking for work. We were pastoring, leading schools. We had a lot of things on our table, but we went and started and all of a sudden somebody came and said, what are you doing? We said, well, we're building a high school. Well, why are you building on my piece of property? Come to find out that the government given that piece of property to two different people and we lost our investment that day. It just seemed impossible. We'd invest this money, the time. And they said, yes, you're right. Um, we've made a mistake. Uh, you can sue us, but we have no money, but we'll give you another piece of land. So they gave us another piece of land. It was probably a beautiful five acres of property. You just couldn't get to it unless you had a helicopter. And it was like, okay. And so along the way, then they said, well, we have another piece of land. And I was tired of the battle. The doors being shut in our face. We thought we had the voice of God. And it was just all going to come together. But in the middle of that, I said, Nancy, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's stop. Let's just move forward. And she said, that's fine. But what is the Lord saying? When God speaks to us, there is a timing for it. When God speaks to us, there is a challenge. It's a step of faith. But God is looking for people who are willing to get out of the comfort place. Because I heard a friend say this, you can either be obedient or comfortable. And it's easy to stay in the place of comfort. It's easy to stay in the place of routine. But God is calling us not to be people of routine. He's calling us to be people of His voice. What does tomorrow look like? 
I don't know, but I serve a God who does know. What is God going to do in two years? I don't know, but I serve a God who does know. And He's asking me right now to step into the water and to be willing to step in faith. Are you with me? Are you going to be one of the ten with the bad report? It's impossible. Or one of the two? Let me make this very personal. We were in, in Belize recently talking with the superintendent. And he was very burdened because of a huge problem in the country with ongoing systemic immorality and financial problems. And he said, we've got to start a, pro, a program for young people because we realize we've got to go to the high school age and start a program of intense character building, not just leadership ability, but building. What does it mean to live as a believer? And as we begin praying with him, saying, Lord, maybe we could use this high school. Would you send some workers? We can develop a team to start a pilot program there. And then God answered that prayer, and he said, yes, uh, you're going to be involved in that. We're going to be involved in helping a team going back to the high school, going back to a place that's way above our ability, our pay grade. We're asking young people to live a cross-cultural life, to live a life of purity in a culture that mocks purity. We're asking young people to be willing to be involved in an intensive physical boot camp, an intensive spiritual and service program. We're asking young people to rise up and be the ones to make a difference. And we don't have the ability. But I serve a God. So I'm not asking you to do something that I'm not willing to step in the water as well. God wants Paint Church to rise up like never before. Amen. What a tremendous history. What tremendous leaders, but God is not finished. And he's looking for those who are willing to be the two in the group of 12. Say, yes, I am ready. I am willing to obey his voice and do what he says. The best days are yet to come. Hallelujah. So God is calling us, each one, to be people of faith. What is God speaking to us? Listen to his voice. Do what he says. As Nancy shared, as we talk about obedience and freedom, whatever you need from the Lord today, there is freedom in Jesus. Amen. Your past does not have to define you. Your sin in the past does not have to define you. COVID does not have to define us. The revival gets to define us. Amen. Amen. I choose to listen to his voice. I am so glad for the history, but I am also excited about the future. Amen. If we have Joshua and Caleb's who were here willing to step and say, it's a beautiful land and we can take them. Amen. It's a beautiful land and we can take them. So today, these next few moments, we'd like to challenge you. First, personally, He knows you by name. And He is here today to embrace you. Not to slap you around. You've been beat up enough. You have these voices inside that are talking, saying you can't do it, but there's a new voice of the Holy Spirit who wants to speak to you. Your past does not have to define you. Listen to His voice. If you need Jesus, He's here. Amen. But others, it is now time for each of us to rise up and to see what God wants to do through Paint Church, not only to Panama, but to the world. Amen. If we're willing to be a Joshua and Caleb and stand up. I'd like to invite the worship team. I'd like to invite each of you to to stand. Um, And I'd like for us to make a determination to hear the voice of God, to listen to what He says, and to be willing to obey His voice. I don't know your past, but I know your future. I serve a God who knows the future. He knows your name. Lord Jesus, right now I pray for everyone here who's in this building as well as listening by live stream, that this moment we would hear your voice. And Father, if there is one today who is wrestling with with a feeling unworthy, 
May this be the day they realize that you know them by name and you are here to meet them, Lord Jesus. And God, that they would respond to you. And Lord, I pray for each one who's part of this, this is their church. And even for the new people possibly visiting today, they would sense this is a moment and a time of destiny. God, we look forward with anticipation to what you're you're going to do. We thank you for the past, but we also expectantly look to the future. But God, I realize that at times it's easier to be one of the ten giving a bad report what we can't do. But I pray in this place there would be those, Lord, who are hearing your voice and saying, yes, we can move forward. Yes, Mm, God, don't let us be defined by our past, our mistakes. Let us be defined by the grace of the Lord. And may we as Joshua hear the voice saying, today, today, today I will respond to his voice. Today I will find victory. Today I will say yes and do what the Lord is calling me to do. I will not hold back. I will not hold back. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to take all of you. so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection can never earn it you give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory you are my champion and giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you won and I am who you say I am you crown me I'm seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving my victory can finally see it now I can finally see it you're teaching me how to receive it so let all the striving cease this is my victory you are my champion giants for morning that we have victory in God's name. Do you believe it? And when I lift my voice and shout, everyone comes crashing down. I have the authority. 
Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. Listening to the words of this song and being reminded of what Jay and Nancy were speaking about, and I'm, I'm as I'm thinking about the Israelites and and them crossing the Jordan River, and and they had to put their feet in the water first before the waters stopped. But as they took that step of faith, as they walked in obedience, the doors began to open, and they began to walk across. Do you know what the first battle was on the other side of the Jordan River? It was Jericho. But because of their obedience in the river, come on somebody, because of their choice to obey at the river, they were able to see a mighty work take place on the other side. And, and for some of you, you've walked into this place this morning and God has been speaking to you about taking a step of faith and being obedient in the very things that he's called you to do. And for some of you, you stayed comfortable long, too long, too long. You've remained in your comfort place. You've remained in a place of routine where you've just been doing the same thing over and over and over. And you think by walking through that routine, you're being obedient to the Lord. But God is saying to you, no, no, no. I'm calling you out for something much greater, something more powerful, something more amazing, something with a greater anointing, something with greater victory than you have ever seen in your life. Do you believe that this morning? This is what I want you to do. Some of you have been hearing the voice of God this morning. Some of you need to step out this morning symbolically from your seat and say, Lord, I'm gonna walk in obedience. I may not understand what's on the other side. I may not understand what you're calling me to do. I may not have it all figured it out. I may not even have the finances for what you're calling me to do. But because you're calling me, because you're speaking to me, I'm going to see the walls of Jericho come down. I'm going to see those walls of discouragement come down. I'm going to see the walls of depression come down. I'm going to see the walls of despair come down. How many of you need to walk in obedience this morning? Come on, raise your hands. Are you ready? We're going to sing this chorus one more time. We're going to sing as the walls come crashing down. And as we sing that, I want you to step out from where you're at this morning. And I want you to come and find a place at this altar. And I want you to begin to worship the Lord in obedience. And Jay and Nancy are going to come around and they're going to lay their hands on you. They're going to pray for you. They're going to believe with you. They're going to encourage you because I believe that the greatest yet to come in this church and in your life. Do you believe it? Here it is, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, God, speak to every person. God, may they step out from their comfort, step out from their routine, 
step out, Lord, into everything that you have for them. Are you ready, church? Here it is. Ready? One, two, three. Step out. Step out. Step out. Step out in obedience right now. God is speaking to you about something. I want you to come down here. I want you to stand. I want you to lift your arms up to the Lord. I want you to surrender. 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 Now, come on. Let's worship this. Let's worship the Lord right now. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Come on. Here it is. Let's go sing. And when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing come on. down. Come on. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on, staff. Where you at? Jesus. Where's the staff? Come on, staff. Y'all need to come down. Leaders, department leaders, I want you to come down. Come on, Kirk Yvonne, come down. You need to pray for some of these. Kirk Yvonne. Yvonne and Kirk, come on, come on, come down. We're going to pray. Come on, here it is. There it is. Come on, lift your voices. There it is. My voice and shout. Yeah. 
of God. And sometimes we come to church and and we have this agenda and we have this program and, and we have our three songs and we have our announcements and we preach the word of God, which is by far the most important thing that we can do. But sometimes it's okay to linger. You know what that word linger, it means to stay. You know, sometimes when we fellowship, we have this tendency to linger when it's time to go. Why? Because there's just something so good <laughs> that's happening and, and we don't want to leave. We just don't want to leave. We just want to stay. And we want to linger in the presence of God. Oh, some of you are already thinking about lunch. Can I tell you, I'm still thinking about eating from the master's table this morning. You know, these are defining moments for us as followers of Christ. That when we wait in his presence, can we just wait for just a few minutes longer? Is that okay? Is that all right? Can we just worship the Lord? We worship you. We worship you. Can we get just instrumental for just a moment? Can we just worship? Come on, lift up your hands. Alza sus manos. Let's surrender. We surrender. Nos rendimos delante de ti, Señor. Come on, just, just worship him in your own words. Sus propias palabras. We worship. Le adoramos, Señor. Gracias por tu presencia. Ramos, we honor you, we lift you up, we glorify you. Oh, what a joy it is to linger in the presence of God, to stay in his presence, it's your presence. Like Juan D was saying, it's, it's about Jesus and his presence. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your visitations. Thank you for your Holy Spirit presence. Oh, we need you. We worship. Come on, just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. morning would say pastor I need a miracle in my life well you just say I need a miracle I need God to move to do something that he only he can do you need a supernatural touch from God if that's you I want you to raise your hands right now this morning if that's you and you're still watching from live stream I want right where you're at just raise your hands you need God to move in your life you need a miracle Father, in the name of Jesus, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, for every hand that's raised, declaring God today that they need a divine touch from you. They need you to do what only you can do in their lives. Father, perhaps it's disease or sickness, they need healing in their bodies. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for healing to be released in their lives, God. Let them be free in Jesus' name. God, maybe it's financial provision that they, maybe someone here this morning needs a job. They need you to open the door for a job so that they can provide for their family or, or even themselves, Lord. You are our source. 
You are our Jehovah Jireh. So we pray right now in the name of Jesus for anyone who needs a job this morning, God, that you would open the doors this week and that you would provide that job right now in Jesus' name. Father, maybe somebody is dealing with an addiction this morning. They need to be loose. They want to walk in freedom. They need deliverance this morning. They need a miracle of deliverance in their life. And they have come with an open heart to walk and receive that deliverance today. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those that need deliverance right now, by the power of your word, we declare it broken over their lives. Chains be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them be free right now in Jesus' name. God, maybe somebody's dealing with a situation in their family. There's division right now. There's conflict right now. They need a miracle of unity in their family today in Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now for unity. Unity to spring forth in this family in Jesus' name. By the power of your spoken word, let it be in their lives right now in Jesus' name. Grant it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak, Holy Spirit. Speak, Holy Spirit. Father, maybe there's someone here this morning that's dealing with a very difficult situation in the workplace. God, there's a lot of fighting going on. There's a lot of division going on. There's, the situation seems hopeless. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would reverse the curse of the enemy today and that you would bring peace in the midst of that situation for that person this morning. In Jesus' name, grant it, Lord. Turn it around. Turn it around for the good and glory of your name. In Jesus' name. I believe miracles are taking place right now. Things are happening in the spirit realm that, that we can't see naturally with the eyes, God, that you're doing right now, God. You are turning things around in people's lives this morning. We believe it. We receive it, Lord. We walk in it today, Lord, because we are people of faith and we serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a miracle working God. And we thank you for the miracles that are being released this morning in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 There's an anointing here, friends. The presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is here right now. He's touching lives. He's touching lives, touching lives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Bondages are broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for the freedom. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I believe you're opening doors. You're opening doors. You're opening doors, God. The enemy may have spoken the word no over your life, but I believe that Jesus is saying yes. And though that you may not see it in the natural today, I believe that the Spirit of God is working and you're going to begin to see doors open in your life that you thought were closed in Jesus' name. I don't know who that's for this morning, but there's some open doors that you're getting ready to walk through in your life and you need to be ready, you need to be prepared, you need to walk in obedience to what God has for you. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We receive this morning, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the grace of our Lord and Savior. We love you. We bless you. We thank you for visiting with us this morning. Thank you for a tremendous word by Jay and Nancy. Thank you for the challenge and the encouragement of walking in obedience, Lord. We love you today. We honor you today. Now help us as we walk out of this place this morning to carry the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who don't know Jesus so that they too can know the love and the hope and the joy and the peace and the presence that we've experienced this morning in Jesus' name. And everyone who loves the Lord this morning said amen and amen. Can we put your hands together for Jesus this morning? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much, Dr. J and Nancy, for being with us here this morning and speaking a powerful word over our lives. Wow. There's just no greater place, friends, to be in the presence of God. I just want you to know that this is our DNA in the church, that we will always give space for the Holy Spirit. We will always make room in our hearts and our lives for God to work in us. But friends, it's not just what happens here at an altar. It's what happens outside of the four walls of this church. And you have to take what God did this morning in your life, and you have to put it into practice. And you have to apply that work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, seven days a week, so that you can see the fruit of God's work in your life. Amen? Man, we are having, I believe, revival services. And I don't know what's going to happen in these upcoming days and weeks, but I believe the Spirit of God is going to break out and break forth in some people's lives. Great things are happening, and even greater things are yet to come. Do you believe that? I believe it. Well, friends, as we always do, we're going to have our prayer team come up here in just a moment. And if you need prayer for anything at all, you want one of our prayer team members to just stand with you and encourage you and, and pray with you, we're going to have some tables up here at the front. And we're going to have our prayer team come. And, and we want you to stand with us as we pray for you, as we stand with you together. We want to encourage you, if you're watching at home from live stream, you're going to see a QR code pop up on the screen. You just put your phone out to that QR code, scan it, and uh, fill out that questionnaire. It'll take you just five seconds or so to fill it out. And today, we'll connect you with one of our prayer team members so that we can pray for you. Amen? How many of you enjoyed being in service today? Whether you're here in person or at home watching online, God is good. God is good all the time. Well, we want to dismiss our live stream. Let me pray over you before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, you blessed our coming out. You blessed our coming in. Now bless our coming out. May the favor of God rest upon us. May the face of God shine through us. May we walk out of this place empowered and filled with your spirit to do even greater things outside of the four walls of this church. God, may we be like Andrews. Let's bring in the Peters, the Marys, the people of this world who don't know Jesus and help us to bring them to the feet of our Savior. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everyone who loves the Lord, said amen and amen. Can we put our hands together for Dr. J and Nancy? Weren't you blessed by them? Amen.